Uh, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Is that, is this mic working? Oh, awesome. Um, and thanks to Nick and Sharon and the Reed corporate team for the opportunity to present. And also thanks to all you guys for sticking around because we've got a pretty exciting story to tell. Um, and as we, go through, as we go through, you'll see that, that uh, we're in a really um, pivotal time in the, in the company. So where are we? We've got a tenement package. It sort of sits just an hour north of Kalgoorlie. So Kalgoorlie's there. This picture just does not do it justice. That's over 100 kilometers of strike of continuous tenements. Um, you, you spend days walking it. It's got two major regional shears, the Leaker and the Ida Fault, deep tapping structures. Um, it's got old workings all the way along, so 100, 120 year old workings along there. Um, those structures are known to host high grade gold mineralization. So what am I really saying? It's like, it's a massive tenement package that we've got and it's known to host high grade gold mineralization. Um, the history of this tenement package is quite fascinating and especially the last 20 years because those, those of you who have seen it before, um, it's, it's been reborn a couple of times and, and prior to Orobanda was Eastern Goldfields. Um, there's been a few problems there and it's primarily based on strategy. So the Daviehurst plant here, it's a really good little plant, but it, it's only little, it's 1.2 million ton per annum. And for the last 20 years, people have systemically tried to put low grade open pit ore into that plant. And what that ultimately means is it, it, it's capped at sort of a 60,000 ounce, 50, 60,000 ounce a year producer, which just doesn't get you enough critical mass to sort of grow cash flows to explore and um, to really leverage up. So what, what this tenement package is, is really prospective for high grade undergrounds. Um, so coming in was just coming, in, like when I joined the company 10 months ago, I was just coming in with that underground focus. So pivoting from an open pit mining strategy purely to an underground mining strategy. And that's already paying dividends. So what, what does it mean in terms of the numbers? And I've got a couple of slides a little bit later when, when we talk about just, just the, the delta, but really sort of 50, 50 to 60,000 ounces this financial year. And in 12 months, a little over 12 months, we'll be at 100,000 ounce run rate. So that's the significance of the change. The other thing to note, we go from not making any money at the moment to making 80 to $100 million. Um, so that's the significance of the change in terms of those metrics. The exciting thing is, is, is we started this strategy 10 months ago. We grabbed the team, the leadership team in, and we said, right, this is clearly not working what we're doing. We sat everyone down and we, and we came up with this strategy and we turned two rigs on to our most prospective target, which was Riverina, in August last year. And so we went from drilling no diamond drill holes, no, you know, no exploration for the underground really ever on that tenement package to turning on two rigs um, and then we hit that hard. And in the last 10 months, we've not only sort of found the underground, we've got the investment decision up, we've got it approved, we've got it funded and we've actually started it. So we cut the portal last week. So it's been a busy 10 months, but it's also a really exciting time. Uh, the corporate overview, the key things to take from this slide is, is we're still relatively cheap compared to where we're going to get to from a market cap. We came from a very low base, um, sort of the last nine, 10 months, we were basically priced to fail as a company. Um, we've certainly turned that around. We finished the quarter with 11.4 mil cash on hand. Uh, we've since the end of that quarter, we've raised another 30 million and we've got another sort of 14 million coming in from asset sales of low grade in the southern end of the belt. So another 44 mil coming in. And then on here, we've got new board. Peter um, was there before, myself and Alan on the board, and, and broadly a new management team. So Andy Sher moved from the Ch GM of Resource Geology to Chief Development Officer. officer. Um, and then we've got a new management team. And the reason why that's important is changing strategy. Mining makes really good uh, generalists in, in roles, um, but you also want really good specialists anchoring departments. And that's what we've got now. So each department anchored by genuine specialists that can not only fix things, but can really fine tune things and improve things. Uh, this sums up the transactions that we recently did to get to the 44 million. The key, the key points here is obviously 30 million from a placement, um, 14 million from, or 12 and a half million from a sale of tenements, 1.7 for a royalty. Uh, and then also had a debt, $11 million debt that was due in November, which was a really uncomfortable time because that's when I was max drawdown in the underground. We've since pushed that out. So we'll be able to fund that by cash when the underground kicks in. And this chart here sums up, I guess, the strategy, strategy just in terms of production and what it's gonna look like over the next couple of years. 
So right now we're sitting here in FY23, sitting around 50,000 ounces um, for the year. Now the important thing to note is, is we've got the open pit Missouri, which we're currently mining. Um, it basically is carrying the entire costs of the business. So whatever we don't fill with Missouri ore, we actually complement with low-grade uh, stockpiles, which we've got plenty of in the tenement package. So we're paying full cost for the processing, full cost for the haulage, full cost for admin, flights, all of that type of thing. So when we add the underground, as it starts coming in, we're only adding underground costs to the, to the company. And so that's why we, we get the kicker. And the exciting thing for that, and I'll talk about more in this, this one underground only half fills the mill, and that'll do about 75, 80,000 ounces a year. Um, we're pivoting now hard to get a second underground because the exciting thing about that is you get two undergrounds that fill the mill, you're knocking above 150,000 ounces, but it adds absolutely no cost to your business because basically you're replacing open pit costs with underground costs. And that's when we go from sort of that 80 to 100 million dollars up to sort of the 200 to 250 million dollars. So the catalyst change, the first catalyst change is underground and it's coming along quickly. Uh, we get a second underground going, um, that's another massive jump and we think we've got some pretty good targets on that. In terms of undergrounds, this one's pretty stock standard, uh, simple layout, um, which, is, which is really exciting. So we've got, it's difficult to see, but we've actually got stack loads here. So when we got the one decline down, we've actually got sort of three mineralized systems that we know of. Now we were just focusing on one, which is main load east, but we've got main load west and actually emerging, and an emerging Murchison load. And the reason why that's important is because one decline corridor, we were talking about 600,000 tonne per annum, which is about the 75,000 ounces. Um, that one decline corridor would be doing that off one load. We add two or three loads onto this. Um, we suddenly get a lot more optionality on grade. We get a lot more optionality on, on our tonnages. Uh, and the good thing is, is we're going to start drilling. So we're cutting the portal last week. Um, we'll be able to come down this decline and drill it out from underground. So in sort of end of August, early September, we'll put an underground drill rig in, and then we can start infilling. So we didn't have the balance sheet to hit it really hard from the surface, but we've got plenty of time as we get underground to fill, fill that uh, geology out. These are a few of the hits. So this is just main load east. So if the, the decline sits a bit, little bit west, um, and then we've got sort of Murchison, main load east, main load west. But this, this here is still only shallow. So we're sort of about 300 metres below the surface there. Um, the FID case we put together is basically, it's a little bit more than reserve, but it comes down here, um, and that's sort of three years at least. We did put a hole sort of almost 200 metres below that, just to see if the system is alive and well down there, and we got two intersections um, on the main load east and west at 14 grams each. So every 80 vertical metres, give or take, call that a, an, an additional year of mine life. Um, but as, as we drill these out, which we're currently drilling these green squares, we're going to keep filling this out. Um, and here's a massive gap through here. So when you're talking about um, how much drilling we've got in here, for us to be able to prove this up um, with relatively small amount of drilling and get in there, it, it shows the consistency of the structure, but it is very, very early days in this system. And as the more we drill, the more we expect to uh, unlock there. And this slide sums it up really well. So th this shows the change in strategy from the open pit to underground. So from here back 40 years, there was only eight kilometres ever drilled at Riverina for the underground. And then when, when I spoke earlier about putting the two rigs on it in, in August last year, in five months, we drilled 20% more drill metres for the underground than the previous 40 years combined. And then this year, we're going to be starting going to 20 kilometres, so we're drilling that out. To put that in perspective, you, you would have heard Darren this morning at Bellevue mention they've drilled 600 kilometres. Uh, into that deposit to get to where they are, we've actually drilled 20. So that's, that's the, the order of magnitude change. So this is a big system in its infancy. We're just starting to unlock it and we're just about, we're just getting underground, which is really exciting. Missouri open pit, so like I said, we're currently producing at about the 50,000 ounces a year. Um, this has been a tough slog as well because we're doing a cut back on two old pits. There was one over here on the WMC load and then you can see the, the bottom of the old Monarch load, and this, this cross-section sums it up. So we've been mining through them, which not only impacts sort of the um, productivities, but also means that every time you go down, you're not getting the full expanse of those uh, ore bodies as you go down. Into this quarter, that actually changes. 
So we're now going to get basically all of WMC, all of Monarch load. And then the other catalyst we've got coming up is in July, we drop a full dig unit. So we go from two diggers moving about 300,000 BCM. We'll go down to one moving about 170,000 BCM. Um, but what it means is costs out for the same or more ounces as we go down the pit. And this is probably, this metric here was pretty exciting for us. Um, we did a lot, lot of work in geology the last six, six to nine months. Uh, and that culminated in last quarter, we had a 50% increase in grade. So that was at tightening up the drill spacing. Um, just really getting back to basics, focusing on that, on the geology side and well, as well as the extraction side, and we've got good results there. So we're starting to get dialed in pretty well, and we'll see the improvements going forward from this. Uh, the funds we raised also include some capital, so we're currently sitting at about um, two and a half million more to spend on the mill. We've done a lot of work this, this year to get it up and running, but crushing it remains a bottleneck. So as, as we grow tons, we're going to actually put in, uh, replace the uh, secondary, or the tertiary crusher rather, in October this year. So there's two and a half mil, million in for that. It's not a big job, um, just de decreases that bottleneck and allows us to start flexing those mill tons up. We've tested the mill and, and the back end of the mill and we can get to a 1.4 million tonne run rate. Um, but at the moment we're held back by this, this crushing circuit. So like I said before, the exploration team's done an amazing job in the last sort of 10 months getting Riverina up, getting the FID in, um, and now they're dialed in to find the next underground because the catalyst for that, like I said, is very substantial to the business and we're definitely not stopping just at, just at one underground. So the good thing we've got on this tenement package is a lot of targets and the bad thing we've got on this tenement package is a lot of targets because it means that we've got to get probably just a little bit more choosy in the short term while we really, really focus on the main ones and we'll talk about three of them, but basically Missouri down dip, bear in mind in the pit, there's potential for an underground on that, which would be great. It's on an M, sunk infrastructure. Um, it'd be too easy to turn on. Callian's another highly prospective high grade underground and also Riverina, north and south. This strike goes for 20 kilometers. Um, it couldn't be just the only area we've drilled out to be the only mine on that. So talking about Riverina, you saw the slide earlier, this scale takes it out. So this is three and a half kilometers. This is all the drilling we've done. We're infilling this. This is sort of the five year, six to 800,000 tonne per annum package. So this one decline will access about like, really call it 700 metres of strike through there. What we want to find is another 700 either here or here, because then we go from 600,000 tonne to 1.2 million tonne. So fully, fully separate sort of packages. Um, and then suddenly you can fill the mill with four to five gram dirt um, and, and everything gets a hell of a lot easier. So this drilling is underway. We'll keep doing it wide space, and then as we start getting onto something, we'll, um, we'll, we'll hone it in a bit more. The next one's Callian, which is about 10 kilometers west of the plant. Um, this is another one, a little bit more complex geology, so we don't want to rush into this one. We've got to drill it and sort of understand the, fructu the structural framework a bit better. But um, what we've got here is sort of deep holes, 10 meters at 17 um, grams. Like we've got high grade hits along here narrow, but we expect these to be repeats, and there's just no drilling um, in recent times targeting that. And then Missouri, we just recently did a deep hole, sort of 200 metres below where the pit will end. We've got a couple of metres of seven grams, um, a couple of sniffs along there. It's a structurally hosted ore body. It's going to take a bit more drilling. The work we're doing in the pit's really exciting because we're unlocking those structural controls. Um, but this has got potential for an underground. We've got a thousand ounces of vertical metre and resource in the pit. Um, we know the ore loads go into the walls there, so when we get underground, there's a good chance that, that that'll be uh, um, something we can do. And then the other thing that we've worked up as well in this time is uh, we've got a really good lithium geo. He said, look, give me, give me eight weeks, a computer and basically a, um, a hammer and a, an offsider. And he sort of spent four weeks on the computer mapping the whole, look, mapping the database, just gathering a lot of data, doing that. Then he spent four weeks, five weeks on site with an offsider. Um, then he asked for three drill holes and basically came up with a really good spodumene lithium deposit in his first hole. So it was really good boots on ground work um, by him. Uh, this was the hit. We released it recently. It's sort of 11 metres at 1.28. Um, these pegmatite swarms here, these two are full with uh, spodumene, but it's in the depleted zone. So we'll do a follow-up program to really work, work that in and um, see what that can bring. But that's another value driver, not our focus. Our focus is the underground. 
This values, that was something else that we did. We um, brought the team in. We needed to change culture. Everyone's bought into this, but people are important. You, you hear this theme all the time. They're vital, and the culture's vital, how they operate. So it's not just good having a good strategy. You've got to have the right, the right um, culture along with it. And like I said at the start, this is an exciting time. Like in the last week, we fired the portal. So we're on the journey to that 100,000 ounces. Um, we're going to get there sort of just over 12 months. Um, we've got the money to do it, so we're well funded to do that. We've got great supportive shareholders. Um, they want to see that belt unlocked, and we're just going to keep going. So we want to get another one. So this comment here shouldn't be underestimated. We're not getting to the end. We're, we're only just getting to the starting line for where we're going to take this company. So it's really exciting, um, and looking forward to keeping you guys updated in coming years. Thank you. <laughs>